Welcome to Catalyst Energies. My name is Dee. Thank you for joining me. I am so grateful that you are here. I am grateful for this second shot of espresso. Normally, I am not coming onto the camera or recording until I've had the appropriate amount of caffeine in my system. So forgive me if things seem a little wonky still. Uh, but this Astro Alert, this is what today's video is, Astro Alert for April 5th, 2023, is necessary to come out now because there are transits that are going to be happening today which feel really important and are a setup to the full moon that's going to be exact on the 6th. So actually it's at 12.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time that the full moon is exact on the 6th. And so those that are west of that time zone, right, so west coast, mountain time, central time, even late in the evening. And even if you don't go to bed early on the East Coast, it'll still technically be late in the evening that this full moon is exact. And so as with all full moons, it's a revelation and often will be, um, yes, I see how now that I am able to and have successfully integrated the impulses of the new moon into a conscious objective very visible form that will need to stay integrated as we go through the rest of the lunar cycle. Or if you are not working uh, consciously or actively with your lunar transits in your chart, or you are being faced with aspects in your life relationship wise within yourself that are not going to allow you to fulfill the um, or to fulfill basically the necessity of integration in, with the full moon, they will fall away. And that will be a big port, part of the third quarter moon, which is something we'll talk about next week. So uh, thank you for being here. Truly, I appreciate each and every one of you very much. And after a few of side conversations in the last day, my own experiences in the last two days, my own uh, dream walking, especially last night coming into this morning, it feels necessary to just draw a bit of attention to today's transits. Now, I did talk about them briefly at the Starseed Ministry broadcast on Monday. Of course, I talked about them in the lunar, um, the full moon forecast for the Libra people. And that's something that you can check out if you haven't already. And the monthly membership, the Starseed Fellowship, your your weekly astrology is also coming out today. So we'll go into more detail of that. And I've already drawn attention to it. But it seems pretty clear at this point that with the waxing gibbous moon, as we're seeing here on the, today's chart, that we are being faced with um, opportunities to bust through obstacles rather than reacting to them after they happen. And we're going to see, as you can see here in the chart, the sun and Chiron come into a conjunction today and the wounds of our inner child and uh, our subjective experience, this victim savior dichotomy that is brought out with Chiron and, you know, the ability to simultaneously use, utilize our superpower without giving in to the identity of the trauma that created it. It's going to be very illuminated. And this has already been growing over the last couple of days, right? The sun came into that three degree orb or within three degrees of Chiron and has been building and building, but it is exact today. And of course, the full moon will be opposite both of these, obviously the sun, because that's what creates a full moon, but even opposite Chiron. So we get this moment here as, as painful and as frustrating as it may be. And I assure you, the moon in a square to Mars early this morning, uh, really set the tone for that frustration and that simmering irritation that could really come out as anger. There, there is though this glimmer of like, okay, let's get our mind right. Let's get our organizational skills on fleek here and really pull it together. And that's with Mercury and Saturn. So I did talk about this, but it feels really important to draw our attention to this because the aspects that have been 
in our own lives that have been building over the last day or so, uh, especially since the weekend, but I would say definitely since yesterday into today, into this full moon, are really presenting the opportunities to see things clearly and to think about them in a very mature and clear and focused way. Even when there are things that are disturbing our sense of equilibrium emotionally, which is a moon in Libra all day long is our emotional equilibrium. What can I do to find that balance in my inner relationship to self, to my relationships outside of myself? And that can be personal relationships, your relationship to your um, coworkers or your career or your job, the relationship to family members, whatever Libra is, is about the balance that we achieve in relationship itself. And It's one thing with the new moon um, wrapped up with the equinox, especially this year, to have all of this impulsive um, emergence of who we can be and, and the actualization of our full potential. And knowing where Aries is in your chart shows you the area of life that this is most likely bringing itself up in. But with the full moon, can we keep that inner poise, our calm mind and understanding as we basically gaze upon the world or the the events that we were once deeply involved in knowing now that we are kind of pulling back and not kind of we're not necessarily going back under right we have we have fully emerged out of the sea of potential and non-differentiation this is the transition from pisces into aries we've already emerged it is now how do we how do we take that desire and maintain the potency of that to actually germinate or actualize? And so the full moon is going to be that moment for all of us where we are able to see, okay, yeah, so far I've integrated what I need to in terms of my own duality in order to maintain this poise and this calm mind and understanding as the, as the <laughs> storm rages around me. Or... If not, then those relationships, those situations that are not allowing for this calm type of energy, they're going to go away. And it's going to be even more of a crisis when we get to the third quarter moon, which will be in Capricorn. It will be in Capricorn. It will be in the sign opposite of the moon's home territory and will be opposite Mars. I mean, the the third quarter moon will not be directly opposite Mars, but it will make an opposition to Mars as it's leading up to that. So that's something we'll talk about next week. But so I want to draw attention to a couple of the transits that are happening today. And you may find yourself um, being very directly faced in a way that you can't ignore anymore right? You can't not address it anymore. And it may be influencing you personally and emotionally. It may be influencing the decisions you're making in your relationships or in relationship to certain institutions in your life. Um, But the sun meeting Chiron today, as we can see in this chart right here, sun meeting Chiron today is illuminating really strongly and bringing our self-identification and personal expression through the lens of our wounds, right? And Chiron as a hybrid, right? He was able to do things that nobody else could do, right? Because he wasn't quite a centaur, but he wasn't quite anthropomorphic. He was an outcast in both ways, but he also was the, you know, considered the first astrologer. He was a healer. He was a teacher of all of these really um, famous and notable figures, especially in Greek and Roman mythology. And so, but at the end of the day, Chiron's hybridization, as much as it made him a superhero in a lot of ways and an incredible teacher, even his own hybridization couldn't save him from his own suffering. At the end of the day, in order to reach the higher awareness of Uranus, because Chiron bridges the orbits of Saturn and Uranus, He had to embody and he had to embrace his materiality. He had to embrace his own his own karma in a lot of ways, which is what Saturn represents is the responsibility of the situation, which is he couldn't heal himself. He had to give that up in order to release himself from his own suffering. And oftentimes Saturn will initiate that level of suffering because there's no getting around it. There's only going through with Saturn. 
And so the Mercury sextile Saturn, which we'll get to in this in this uh, broadcast here, this little astral alert, we'll get to that because this is where we get to utilize what Saturn is providing for us in this moment, especially because it is currently in conjunction just about exactly within a degree of the fixed star Fomahawk, which is a royal fixed star connected to Archangel Gabriel. So there is a profound stream of divine messaging and consciousness that is available to us. And in fact, um, the, the pathway, right. It's like that exit, that exit lighting, you know, on the plane, I can't stop thinking about it, but also like an isthmus, right. That you're surrounded on all sides by the unconscious, undifferentiated collective unconscious, but there is this really strong and, and delineated, interchange that is available and Saturn has really clear boundaries, even in Pisces. But that also means there are clear boundaries and it is a narrow band that you have to travel through and you have to make sure that that is clear. And you're not going to be able to keep a calm mind or a poised approach and understanding if you are getting pulled into all of the the noise around you, either uh, emotionally, either intuitively, either in your in your uh, field, whatever it is for Pisces, it is everything and nothing, and so. You get pulled into all of this shit that's not even yours. And so this moment today is going to be very illuminating on many levels. So um, I want to bring your attention to the degree that Chiron and Aries, um, Chiron and the sun in Aries is in because we have moved from the midpoint now from the desire at the first half of Aries into the potency of the second half of Aries. And if you remember from the starseed ministry the reading and the outcome of the reading being that sun in aries that three of wands reversed that is the second decan the second 10 degrees which is where the sun is right now and if we are if our mind is not in that in in that narrow band of divine contact whatever that means for us and we are getting pulled into or just not listening that's the other thing then it's going to be a difficult full moon it's going to force us into having to pull in in order to keep um, our emotional equilibrium and some people will do it out of spite some people will do it because they have no other choice but for those of us who are listening here we have we have this one day here that is like here let me show you exactly what it is you're working with and how to actually um, master it in your own mind right now so the degree of 15 to 16 degrees is in terms of the Sabian symbol is nature spirit seen at work in the light of sunset. And it represents being attuned to the potency of the elementals of the invisible forces, right? So this could be the occult, right? Um, and certainly as a Chiron, as a hybrid, it was his hybridization that gave him access to these types of invisible forces. But we all have access to it by our birthright, just by inherently being human, we have access to um, a relationship with nature and, you know, relationship to a uh, great spirit or God through nature. So we are able to establish a contact, a life-giving contact with these natural forces. Now, here is the catch. Oftentimes, we're too focused on working for some sort of conscious goal, right? We set our goals and we're like, this is where we're going. And, and certainly with the new moon and the equinox at that time of zero degrees Aries, we have all of these impressions of like what we can be and we're emerging out of um, the undifferentiated primal soup in some ways to come into a new creative potential. And we set these goals, and even with the first quarter moon, right, where we have this, you know, this organic vision of wholeness of what we can uh, grow into and how we can express ourselves, we still have to put it into action. And so we have these consciously set goals um, that we that that kind of keep us from actually being 
able to realize the presence of something that is more than us and is outside of us in some ways. It's inside of us and it's outside of us and invisible, but it is the potency of these natural energies, these life-giving energies, the elementals, right? The spirits of the land, of your relationship to your guides um, through, through, through God, through the great spirit. So this degree is an invitation to open your mind to an intuitive, and holistic way of approaching life, that it doesn't have to be so linear so or so hyper-focused on this is my goal and this is how I'm going to do it, that you don't even allow... Um, you don't even allow the influence of providence into your life. And the best way to look at this type of transit, especially this degree, and the sun being the ruler of Leo in the fifth house is very childlike. It is the process of becoming like a little child, to be trusting, to have faith, um, to know that simple good fortune with unlimited opportunity, um, you know, can come about as we create the space for it. Now, when we get caught up in the Chiron wounding and we can't get out of that wounding, we become deluded, right? And and we think that we have more than we do, and then we can't actually act in real self-interest because we are kind of caught, especially with the wounded healer aspect and the savior aspect of Chiron. It's just like, well, my life is miserable because of this trauma, but at least I can help others. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't be doing that, but when you keep that wound open, or if you can continue to utilize that hybridization in order to, um, in order to get somewhere and you are, you yourself are not actually, um, healing or releasing your trauma and, and becoming like a little child, which is very much what, you know, Christ had said. Um, and I would even go so far as with the, you know, kind of the Buddhist mentality as well as where you release the attachment to your desire. It's not that you don't have it. You release the attachment to it being in a certain form. And so Sun Chiron conjunct is going to bring all of this right to the surface. It's going to illuminate it. And we have this moment here of real healing if we see it as an opportunity. Now, leading up to this point, overnight into the into the morning the moon in the in the early degrees of libra and in particular when it came into a square with um mars first thing this morning or late last night it really depends on where you are and so this may have come out in dream time i know it did for me personally um well let's see here you're gonna see the moon in a square. So this was this morning or late last night, depending on where you are. The square with the moon and Mars, this often will give you this insatiable need to meet what your passionate desires. Remember, Mars rules Aries. And so there's a fighting spirit to succeed. But extra care is absolutely needed when you have a Mars square the moon, right? Because you can cause a lot of damage with emotional outbursts. You can take unnecessary risks because you're just like, I need to do this, right? And you have this fighting spirit and you're ready to conquer. It also makes you short tempered and you could do things you can't take back. Okay. Um, or say things that you can't take back, or you can really put some people at risk if you're doing some real dangerous stuff. The, the best way to deal with a moose, moon square Mars, especially because the moon is in the sign opposite of Mars, is to release your feelings in a controlled way. Um, expect, and I think that we already know this, some amount of emotional discomfort is expected, but with the waxing gibbous, right, which is where the moon is, we are meant to come out ahead of these obstacles and be like, you know what? I'm pushing them out of the way, right? I'm not waiting to react to them because I'm starting to take a conscious and, um, you know, fully aware approach to integrating my own polarity. So courage is really needed to face what is causing us discomfort. And even if we're trying to be like, I'm just going to push it out of the way. The moon and Libra in this moment is like, we have to really visualize very clearly what we are wanting to take calm create form. Mars is busy, um, you know, building the nest, so to speak. I'm going to create a space in order for this to come in. I'm going to keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And you may be do something destructive or you may, um, you may keep out opportunities, um, to bring forward what you are truly trying to, um, visualize or, 
or actualize because you're not able to be, you know, because the square is giving you this like insatiable need to the point where you're not even thinking about what's going to come and fill that nest. You're just like, I'm just going to create this, right? So slow your roll and just chill out here, right? And it's going to be Mercury and and Saturn in its sextile that is going to be this kind of like sobering but really important moment here. So this is going to be later today. So we have this moon square Mars. This is this morning. And then we have a couple hours of the the moon moving through Libra, not making any major transits necessarily. But this is where roughly about it looks like right, yeah right about noon right that we're east east coast time mercury and saturn are going to come into that sextile so sextile is a 60 degree angle it is that inner transformational moment where you take these two foundational angles and bring them on top of each other in some ways, right? So there's an inner transmutation that happens with a sextile, right? Clear thinking, organized, this is Mercury sextile Saturn, thinking, good judgment, increased concentration, long-term investments, okay? Um, You may have profound discussions right now. You may want to tell people something that you have discovered. You're like, you got to know about this. And you'll be really serious with Saturn involved. And in fact, if you're really tapping into Source or God or the Great Spirit, it through Archangel Gabriel, which is where Saturn is right now, you're going to have that direct stream coming through and out of your mouth, right? It's a good time to teach people or be a mentor, or it's a good time to study and listen to people as well. There are profound discussions that can start happening. But they come through clear thinking, good judgment, increased concentration. And where's Mercury? It's in Taurus right now. The pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, my friends. And this, you know, as we are uh, mentally kind of connecting into this right now, this is about the natural kind of communion, right? Uh, Material transubstantiation. It is about faith in the true incentives of our physical physical world that has been provided for us by the great spirit, by the creator of this uh, dimension in this universe. So there's an inner, with Mercury at three to four degrees Taurus, there's an inner assurance that enables us to hold steady in every course of our choosing, right? So we have to, it's very tempting today to just be like, blah, I'm just going to like destroy, you know, because I'm just getting so frustrated and I'm not feeling balanced. It's about bringing a sense of and an experience of faith and inner assurance in order to have clear thinking and good judgment. Because the downside of this is we have these futile expectations and, and we lose opportunities because we're kind of wandering off into some fantasy land here of the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow that we have to, we're envisioning it in a very specific type of way and not allowing divine providence to enter our life and in fact Saturn I know Saturn in Pisces has not been really great and it's been very difficult for people it has I mean it is not an easy energy with Saturn in the first decan of Pisces. I mean, it's going to retrograde and move back to zero degrees Pisces. So we got some serious time here in this first decan, which can be um, apathy. It can be suicidal ideation. It can be a sense of um, almost laziness and giving up, right? Complacency because it's so... It, there's so much density in what otherwise is meant to be a purely spiritual thing. But the thing about Saturn as well, it gives us like something to hold on to. It gives us an anchor, right? It's a sense of like, this is, this is what it is. And again, the only way out is through it. And this is a really important moment to get out ahead of the things that are really disturbing us or leading us to feel like a victim or wanting to make some change that if we do that, and I'm not saying don't make change. What I'm saying is that, um, if we, out of our frustration, start to act instead of keeping that poise, that calmness, um, we may do damage that is going to work against us, right? So sometimes we find ourselves, <laughs> we find ourselves, if we knew what was coming, we probably would block it in some way because we don't actually want um, the fullness of divine intervention sometimes because it takes you know, it takes strange 
pathways. Like last week, there was a sonic blast. There was a windstorm that sounded like a sonic blast, right? And it downed a tree that came and uh, it didn't do too much damage, but to to the woodshed, but enough that we're going to have to fix it. And we had to spend a lot of time yesterday with chainsaw and cutting everything back. But lo and behold, right? I wouldn't have chosen that. But lo and behold, they were all white pines. I'm going to have pounds and pounds and pounds of medicine now. I would never harvest that much from a live tree. And so what I'm saying is that's just an example. And there are other things that are examples that all of us can kind of come to is that it's all perfect in the way that it is. But if we are not able to be the vessel in order for that message to come through and we're either distracted, we're shutting it down, we're letting our ego goals get in the way of the divine plan here, where it's going to be a lot more difficult, I would say, to really maintain that calmness as we're coming to this full moon. And especially the next two weeks leading up to the solar eclipse, because it's the latter half of the lunar cycle that is a struggle, right? It's it's the latter half where you're like, okay, all those organic impulses from the new moon are starting to literally wane away. And it's our objective, our objective and conscious relationship with our own du- duality that it has to pull us through. And it gets very difficult. I suspect that this third quarter moon in Capricorn is really going to test us and our commitment to this process, right? And of course, Mars and Cancer is making that even (laughs) that much more of like, uh, I need to protect, I need to, um, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? There are really important ways that we can use Mars and Cancer, but there's also ways that we can um, find ourselves, you know, pulling into the turtle shell in a way that's not really helpful. So that's the astro alert for today. Um, the sun in a conjunction with Chiron, Mercury in a sextile to Saturn, and the moon in Libra, especially this morning, making that square with Mars, really kind of aggravating that, that insatiable desire right now. So I would say slow your roll. Realize that the potency to um, actualize all of our unique potential um, is something that is coming from within us um, as a endowment from, you know, the great spirit source or God, and that the more we try to push something out of our ego sense or out of a lack of um, satisfaction, uh, the more that we may find ourselves having to clean up a mess. So the Mercury sextile Saturn today, really, really powerful and a really uh, just just a gift in a lot of ways right now. And even the sun conjunct Chiron, as much as it's going to illuminate our own fears and our wounds of inner self and that dichotomy of being a victim or a savior, as much as it's going to illuminate it, it's necessary. It's like being able to see things really, really clearly so you can clean them out and patch them up and start actually healing. So my friends, thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate each and every one of you so much. I just want to show you real quick, because in case you're not on social media, you're not on my email list, um, you're not checking the website, I just want to let you know that I am now offering a sale, a 30% sale on everything on my website. Um, You just put the promo code in and catalyst the promo code catalyst at checkout through my website on any of my services the only thing it doesn't apply to um, and I'm really you know relying on the honor system right now because I have no way to actually manage this without upgrading my website and I just it's just not something that I can do right now which is that the eclipse reading is already at a sale rate and that is available as well if you want your six month forecast from April to October which by the way is when Pluto stations direct again it's going to station retrograde at the beginning of May and go back into Capricorn so it's going to station direct right on the 10th of October so if you want to see what the next six months is going to look like while the retrograde is happening this is also um, Um, a good time to book this. This sale rate, please do not use this promo code for the eclipse season forecast and the lunar transit forecast. That's already at a sale rate as well, but everything else is 30% off. You just use the catalyst promo code. And if you are a monthly membership, double up with your other starseed promo code, um, your starseed fellowship monthly membership promo code for an extra 10% off and you get 40% off. I mean, that's, that's pretty substantial. Um, and this is available till the end of the month. So this is a great time. If you've been like, Hmm, I'd really like an 
a natal chart reading so I can understand what Dee is talking about when she's talking about this stuff. Um, now's the time, and it'll be open till the very last Monday of April. So, my friends, thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate each and every one of you so very much. Thank you for um, being here and paying attention to this Astro Alert. And uh, enjoy the full moon. Seriously, enjoy it as much as you can. Find that peace and poise and that sense of balance within yourself within this full moon. And if you can't, you then you know that there are things that are worth working on right now in order to establish that for yourself. So I'll see you guys um, on the next video. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.